Hey guys, good evening, how's it going? I've had so much technical difficulties getting this, but let me get started with the Cisco Packet Tracer uh, tutorial. I'm going to show you guys how to pretty much get started with using a switch and using the Cisco command line interface. So if you're going to get your CCNA or you're going to start with your CSENT, this is probably going to be the, uh, the video you want to be watching instead of watching random YouTube videos. All right, so I'm dragging out a switch right here. Um, so let me introduce you to Packet Tracer first because it's a very essential piece of software if you're going to get your Cisco certifications. Um, it's not as robust as a switch, so you're not going to have all the software that you have on a switch, but this is a good start. So you have to enroll for the Cisco Networking Academy. You might be able to get it through other shadowy means. Um, if you know what I mean. So um, it's all up to you how you get it. Um, this Cisco Net Academy is definitely, uh, it's pay to play. So it's not like a free course. Uh, you can also use GNS3, which um, is pretty cool. But personally, um, I really, I really wouldn't use GNS3 if you're a starter, if you aren't into virtualization. Um, so Cisco Packet Tracer won't virtualize your your network environment it's just going to simulate it so it's kind of like playing a networking video game um so enough with the geeky stuff let's get down to the meat and business of all of this so um so i have a blank slate and i'm dragging switches and this is what uh, if i click on this this is switch number three and this is the switch right here so it's a catalyst 2960 it's it's a fairly uh common um it's a fairly common switch. Uh, you will find it in mostly every networking environment, at least uh, in a small business uh, up to uh, to a medium-sized business. So it's uh, it's fairly common. Um, I definitely would recommend you getting used to it. So let's go ahead and open this up and go into the command line interface. And I'm just going to go ahead and open this up so you can see. I hope it's big enough and it provides enough detail. If you need, if you can't see this, just let me know. I know the video is not the best because I'm on a freaking Wi-Fi connection that's on one of those integrated, not integrated, but it's one of those PCI Wi-Fi cards. So I'm trying to make this better. Hopefully this is the first crappy video that I have and it's the last crappy video that I have that's live. But um, if you can bear with me and have any questions, feel free to ask questions. I'm ready to answer questions. So right now this is pretty much what a Cisco device it boots up and it gives you information so right now this is a MAC address um, switches do have MAC addresses everything that's on the network will have a MAC address so even your Bluetooth devices have MAC addresses um, if you've been watching the courses that I've been providing I will I do give details and this is a fairly good review uh, actual real-life review of what what you will do as a technician so uh, the base Ethernet MAC address is listed right here, the motherboard assembly number. So all these parts do have the power supply uh, part number. So if you need to replace your power supply, uh, it, it's not always that it's not every day that your Cisco power supply will fail. But if it does happen, you know where to get this information. Um, the CCNA or CSAN won't really focus on this, but it's a good uh, it's in the real world. You really want to make sure that you kind of know what you're doing. Um, we have a. We have an overview of what devices that we have available. So we have 24 fast Ethernet ports and two gigabit Ethernet ports. Um, so it's a switch. It gives us the model number WSC29 so and so switch version and the image. Cool. So it's returned to get started. So you would be connected via SSH or Telnet. I hope not. Or console cable. So let's go ahead and press enter because that's our return. Um, we have the host name right here, and that's pretty cool because that tells us the host name, so what it's named in the network. Um, so we have a switch right here, and let's say we have a let's let's do it how we would do it in real life. Um, this is just uh, video game mode, and we're gonna go into real life mode, even though we're still in video game mode. And I'm just going to load a, a generic laptop because more than likely whenever we interface directly through console, it's probably going to be on a laptop. So let's grab a console port and I will go over what a console port is if you watch my Cisco CSENT tutorial. 
courses, go see Synth Course, and it's free. So RS232, uh, that is the serial interface. And we're going to go ahead and put it on console. And we're going to, and this is the simulated laptop. We're going to go to the desktop and we're going to open the terminal. And if you're going to use a terminal, use putty in the real world. And this is definitely, and I'm speaking to newbies. Um, if you're interested in learning about this, uh, feel free to ask questions. And if, if this is something that you already know, just point fingers and laugh. If that's what you want to do, if that makes you good, uh, feel good. Um, we don't really need to change the baud rate or anything, so we're just going to go ahead and press enter. And voila, we're in the switch. So this is what you would see if you connected through like PuTTY, SSH, and, uh, and uh, hooked up a, a console cable. So right, ha right here I have a switch. So you press enter. It uh, So this is a command line interface. This is um, really a, a common interface, uh, whether you're doing web programming or program, not programming, but... I guess configuring switches, it's going to be, or routers or network or whatever else, um, even servers have command line program, uh, command line interfaces, and you can send commands to these devices. So this is what it is. It's fairly gnarly and it's been around since forever and it's still pretty useful. I uh, would highly def uh, recommend getting used to it because it offers more options in a GUI. Um, sometimes it's faster than a GUI if you know what you're doing. So let's go ahead and um, get started. So if you do the question mark, it will give you some information. So it's going to give me a list of commands that I can do. So I can connect uh, to open a terminal connection, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to um, I'm going to enable. So enable and hit enable, and it's going to go into the executive mode. So now that I'm in executive mode, I can make changes. Um, and you see question mark, and it gives me a lot more things that I can do. Exec uh, actually, executive mode, I think it lets you execute commands. I'm sorry. Um, and if you go configure terminal, it makes you, it lets you, go, it goes into global configuration mode. Let's repeat it again, global configuration mode. So it's gonna let you configure pretty much uh, things that have to do with the actual operations, network operations of the switch. So question mark right here, and I see I have access list uh, banner. Um, so let's go ahead and play around with this. And I'm gonna do access list, oh, nope, sorry. So I'm gonna do banner, and let's pretend I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm gonna put question mark, and it's gonna give me a list of commands that I can execute. So it's message, message of the day, so message of the day and uh, so it's going to be special character special character and in between the special characters um, let me show you right here so in between those special characters right here I can type in whatever I want so this they you see but I usually do dollar sign because um, it's my favorite dollar sign yeah it's a rapper dollar sign yeah I'm sorry yeah I, I listen to that guy Sorry, shamey. <laughs> All right, so um, now we're gonna do um, a message. It is dangerous to g venture out. And this is not what you would do in a real production environment. I'm just trying to make this fun for you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and exit. All right, let's go ahead and exit. And I'm going to put enter. And I see the message of the day pops up right here. It is dangerous to venture out. So um, that's really what it is. So it's um, it's pretty cool that you can actually uh, put the message of the day. Whenever you log into uh, uh, actual enterprise, you're going to have like, hey, do not enter unless you're authorized to enter this switch. Otherwise, we're going to sue your pants off. Not really in that language, but pretty much that's what they're telling you. And if you take a security class, they're definitely going to emphasize on making sure that you can take legal action on whoever breaks into your switch. Now, getting out my soapbox, and let's go ahead and um, 
continue. So you can do shortcuts if you know what you're doing. So enable, I shortened up to EN. And conf T for configure terminal. So it's really fine and dandy. I got everything going. Um, I changed the, the banner of the day, the message of the day, if you will. So um, now I'm wondering what I can do uh, to make this switch a little bit cool. So let me introduce you to the concepts of uh, pinging, um, if you haven't learned about pinging. Uh, generally, you want to set up a DHCP. You don't want to set up your IP addresses in static, but we're going to do this um, in static just because we want to make sure that we know what we're doing. So um, we have a guy right here, and let's do... Let's add another switch right here. Let's just play around and build a pretty decent sized network. So let's say this is the top floor because we want our master switch on the top floor, obviously. It's really cool. And we have computers right here. And these computers are not going to, these are just regular Joe Schmo computers. They're the everyday people that make the money because everybody knows IT people don't make the money in the company. Am I right? All right, so. Connecting this to fast Ethernet and this is auto connect. You don't really have to do this. So it's connected to the fast Ethernet port 2, fast Ethernet port 1. And whenever you connect to like devices on um, nowadays, it doesn't really matter because everything's auto MDIX. But um, the way it works is that you need to have a crossover cable. And I'm trying to find out which one's a crossover here. Uh, is this crossover? Yep, copper crossover. And it just lets two like uh, devices communicate with each other, whether it be two switches or two uh, routers. So we're gonna do fast Ethernet zero, uh, zero one, fast Ethernet zero. Okay. And we have a thing called spanning tree protocol that is going to make sure that these devices um, don't loop. So it's gonna make sure that there's not another switch connect. There's not two connections, and it's like relaying frames over and over again. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail, but that's something. Um, it's gonna be orange. So whenever you see a network switch that's just flashing orange, that means that it doesn't have a data link yet. It's able to see another one. So let's do something really cool, actually. Let's go back to the exit. Oh, okay, so now it saw that it's, uh, as you can see, it's no longer orange and it's flashing green. So let's do, uh, and whenever you're in exec uh, execution mode or execute, executive mode or whatever they want to call it um you can actually ask questions like show show run and which if i put tab it's going to show show running configuration so um show run is going to give me a wealth of knowledge so it's going to give me exactly what the configuration of the switch is so right now what you can see is that it's version 12.2. There's no service stamps, uh, timestamps, or um, no service timestamps debug. So that's just gonna tell you that you don't have these um, these services enabled for the switch. Um, no service password encryption, so the password isn't en encrypted. So spanning tree mode uh, per VLAN spanning tree, uh, spanning tree uh, system ID, uh, extended system ID. So that's just uh, I will cover the spanning tree stuff later it's way too complicated to explain right now just in case you guys are wondering because i know somebody is out there is just wondering what spanning tree is look it up read about it um banner mode so uh banner message of the day sorry mode message of the day so like i said i wrote it and these are the special characters supposedly that i inputted and it says it's dangerous to venture out um, so line console zero, that's uh, the console. There's only one console line, and line VTY04, line VTY050, uh, um, no, sorry, five to fifteen. So these are your your lines where you can SSH or Telnet in, and Telnet is a it's like non-secured. Uh, plain text communications between devices over a network and SSH is secured uh, secure shell um, communications um, SSH is definitely what you want to have uh, just FYI and if you ever turn it into a switch somebody should smack your hand because you're not supposed to do that
Okay, so, and I will explain more detail about all, everything that I'm talking about in the CCNA courses that I will drop. All right, so, um, so now that everything is converged in the network, we can actually um, ping. So Packet Tracer lets us do these little ping tests right here. Oh, doesn't have a function. So it looks like maybe because I don't have an IP, it's not going to let me do that. And let's go to this computer right here. And whenever somebody's telling you that uh, my computer doesn't have internet, you know, we all heard it. Somebody says my computer doesn't have internet. And if you're an end user and you're getting mad at me because I say that, hey, it's there's a proper way to say it. Let me show you how you should talk to your technician. So we have a command and it's IP can, ugh, there's this cable running across my keyboard and it's not letting me type. And if I move my keyboard, I'm gonna drop this monitor that's so jankly fit on my desk. So uh, now I lost my train of thought. Great. So you've got, this is what happens when you have attention deficit disorder. All right, so it's um, IP config forward slash all we want all our device all the information that we have and what do you know we have a 0.0.0, .0, .0 address and a subnet of 0.0.0, .0 and a default gate with 0.0, .0. that's not going to work that's not going to let us talk to other devices so and i just gave you a cool command you should know if you're going to try to get your comptia a plus so let's go ahead and uh, change the configuration. Let's go to IP configuration and let's set it to static or, okay, so if I get DHCP, um, I just wanna tell you guys this because it's really cool. And if you're ever troubleshooting something like DHCP and you're like, why isn't it connecting? You know why. So DHCP failed, a PIPA is being used. So a PIPA is like this Microsoft protocol that's network protocol that whenever a Microsoft machine is not able to find a DHCP server, it will give you this address because it's telling you, hey, I can't find a DHCP server. Let me make one up and pull one out of my butt. So a PIPA never works, just FYI. I've never seen it work in real life. And it's just mostly for consumer hardware. And by when I mean consumers, I mean like your, whenever AT&T installs a, a router for you, um, if for some reason the DHCP fails, it's gonna do like the standard uh, subnet that everybody has, which nobody has a 169, 254, 124. Um, if you see 169 uh, on this and 254 right here, you know that it's in a PIPA and you need to contact your network administrator and let them know that you're not getting a DHCP uh, handed IP. So let's go back to static. So much information. Yes, this is how hard the Cisco CCNA exam is. So, um, Let's go ahead and give it a 10, 10 dot, 10 dot, 10 dot, 10 dot one. Okay. And the subnet mask of 255, 255.0 dot zero. And the default gateway, actually, no, why, why did I give it a one? That's, that's incredibly stupid of me. You don't want to give out one, 10 dot, 10 dot, 10 that 254 that's going to be your gateway and the dns server is going to be um zero 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 technically we're just going to use google's dns but it's never ever going to use it um all right so let's do this one right here oops not command prompt ip config static and we're going to go 10.10.10.20 and 255, oh, what did it do that? 255.255.0 and we're gonna set the gateway. We don't have a gateway right now, but if I would have put a gateway, this is what the gateway would be. Um, and we just wanna make sure that we have the same DNS server in a production environment. I wanna get you guys uh, ha with having good habits. Um, so, um, desktop, man, it's been a while since I've used this. And that, pconfig, and we're gonna 10.10.10.20. .10 .10 .10 .10 .10 .10 .10 
Let's do 85. Oh, nope. There's no such thing as that IP. 255, 255.0. And the gateway 10.10. .10. We could leave the gateway blank since we're not going to go outside a network. But I just want to get you guys in the habit of filling this out because there's no way you're going to be in an enclosed environment like this. Uh, unless you have a very specific reason to be in an enclosed environment like that. So, okay. So I should have this. So now, so all this is one broadcast. So this whole network is one giant network, whether you believe it or not. You might think it's multiple networks, but it's just one network. It's one very simple network. And if I can remember how to draw, that'd be great. Is this a drawing? Oh, there we go. Draw a polygon. Let's just do this. And let's fill it with color. It's, it feels super colorful today. And let's do red because that's Vela IT red. Got to stick with the branding. Okay, so we're moving it here. All right, so this is one giant, um, not giant broadcast. This is one giant, what's it called? Oh, this is why you guys need to know all your terminology because if I was taking a Cisco exam, I would have missed a question. Um, so each port is a broadcast address and this is just a, this is just a giant subnet. And so all, so whenever a broadcast is whenever this computer doesn't know where to go. For example, I handed an address that's like 10.10. .10. Um, so if, if it's in 10.10.10, .10 .10, and because it's a slash 24, it's going to know that anything up to 255, well, 254 technically, 255 is going to be the broadcast IP, um, is not going to, it's going to be able to find it. So it's just going to be like, hey, what's your MAC address? It's going to go on the ARP table here. Um, actually, what's the command for show ARP? Show ARP table. So there's no IP associated. But if we go to the command prompt and let's go ping trace, that's 10, not 10, not 10, and the other one was 15, right? So it's whenever we do a ping test, it's going to tell us if it's going to be like, it's pretty much like a hello, hello, and it's going to be like echo, you know, it's going to like, it's pretty much an echo back from another machine. And looks like we're getting no luck here. Which is really odd because we do have this one on dot 15. Do I have to set it? Is that what I have to do? So now we're going to do some troubleshooting. So now we're going to do IP config backslash all. So we'll have the 85. I mean, the correct subnet. For some reason, I am not going. I am not getting to that one. So it's so nice to be able to troubleshoot. Let's ping from, okay, let's ping from the switch. So we're going to do ping 10.10.10.85. Oh, and you know what I did here? If you know what I did, good for you. I'm just going to do like the, the regular door, the Explorer, wait five seconds for somebody to tell me what I did wrong. And your time's up. <laughs> so what happened was let me get a copper straight through and connect it to the fast ethernet <laughs> so there we go i was trying to ping something through a console cable and the console cable is not an ethernet uh, connection just quick fyi and as you can see because the spanning tree it's making sure that it's not another switch so I'm just going to go in here and what's uh, interface, oh, config terminal, interface, fe's, uh, f0 slash 1, port, port fast. Oh, didn't do it. All right. That's what, huh. 
Okay. Switch. I just want to do. Oh, switch port. Port security. Nope. Huh. I need to look at that command. But let's go back here. All right. So now we can. I guess we can ping 10.10.10.85. So the timeout is in two seconds. So if in two seconds we don't get a response, then um, that means that, oh, 0% success rate. Let's go ahead and do that again. Let's go and check this out. So I am 10.10.85, 0% success rate. Oh, wait, I think the switch is not able to ping because it doesn't, it, the switch itself does not have a IP, so let's go to 10.10. .10 what was it? 15. There we go. All right. So yeah. So the switch doesn't have a doesn't really have a IP, so it's not able to ping, unfortunately. Uh, and if you do ping uh, dash T, it's going to be a, a trace ping, so it's going to keep pinging. Um, and let's go ahead and go on the other one. And do ping dot t dot ten dot ten dot ten dot eighty five and we can get a hold of eighty five. So if you were if you had a issue where you couldn't ping to a server or you couldn't get access to a server, that's what you would initially do. Make sure that your uh, network uh, your network infrastructure is able to reach each other. So um, let's put it in terminology in uh, truck terminology. So for some reason, if you had a truck and you were on the highway and for some reason like you know like i said these these are little bridges if you will and this one is a bridge that i can't really send big data through so a big truck wouldn't be able to go through it so it wouldn't get to this destination so if you want to put it in that way that's the way i kind of think about it sometimes um so now that i'm able to do a ping I can see that I can actually reach this uh, this route. This de technically not a route, but this destination. All right. So our network is looking good. We have connectivity. It's awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, just close these windows out. Um, and I'm gonna go back on the computer. And we're gonna go on the terminal. And we're gonna start the terminal session. And we're gonna. Go ahead and uh, show um, interface brief. Oh, show interface. So show interface uh, fast Ethernet uh, zero slash one. Okay. So this whole command right here. So for some reason, let's say somebody's not getting an internet connection. So you will start. See if you can ping it. If you can't, um, we can look at details like, you know, fast Ethernet 01 is up, line protocol is up. So that means, when and the command is in executive mode, is show interfaces fast Ethernet and the num the port number. So it's the, the port type, which is fast Ethernet and the number. And this is for like a bladed unit. So well, if you had a bladed unit, you would have another one. So whenever you have like an insert, it's going to give you an additional zero or something. I will go into detail with that on later. Um, so we know that it's that is up. So we know that it's physically when it, the first up is whenever it's like physically up, like you actually have power going through it. And it's um, it, they do have power. It's not enough to power something unless it's like a poe and we will talk about that later but um it is a low voltage it's not going to like zap you and kill you and give you a heart attack but it is going to uh power these very sensitive network devices um line protocol is up so line protocol that's like um that's that's the logical side this is physical and think about this as logical so this is like the actual data the actual data uh, how can I put it the actual data protocol so the actual data protocol is up so that means you can actually ping um, between these devices 
And let's keep going down here, encapsulation ARPA. So that's the address resolution protocol. That's how the internet started. Um, so we can see how many packets have been sent out, how many received broadcasts. So um, a broadcast is whenever a device is, telling, is just sending out messages to try to figure out where it's going. Uh, zero input arrows, uh, zero ZRC, zero frames, zero overrun, zero ignored, zero abort, watchdogs. Um, so you get all these statistics. Um, if you're having errors, you're going to find them right here, zero output errors. Um, so you're going to, this um, interface reset has been 10 times, uh, zero lost carrier, zero. So whenever you have a, a high number on the, on the collisions, um, you might want to check and make sure that you have a, that you don't have, um, you have duplex enabled and you not set to uh, one of those weird half duplex modes, uh, which most modern um, switches should be able to uh, run on full duplex without uh, having to have any collision error. So collision, the reason why you get collision is because back in the olden days, legacy days, as they would say, um, you would share one line. Uh, this is technically two lines, so you can send up and send down. Um, simultaneously so you can receive data and send data you used to share just one data lane so imagine having a one-way and you have two cars and that's what a collision is uh, so since luckily it's electronic and nobody's gonna get hurt if there's a collision that's okay uh, back in the day at least and they would send data they would uh, it used to be that switches uh, the sorry switches uh, network devices would try to figure out when they could send data so they would make sure that uh, there was no data being sent and if there wasn't uh, any data being sent they would send a electronic signal uh, and that electronic signal would hopefully reach this computer right here um, but sometimes the computer might be sending something at the same time and if they did we have a collision so that's pretty much what happens with a collision. It's only for whenever you're sending data that way. Uh, it shouldn't really happen, but if you do have a collision, then you know why. Um, I'm not going to go into detail right now what everything else means, but it's a good, uh, all this is a good way to check up and see what's going on with your network. Um, and you do have a, you do have a hardware um, address for each port. So let's go ahead and um, what's what's the time mark that we're at right now? Um, okay, we're at a pretty good, pretty good um, pretty good time limit. So let's go ahead and uh, let's introduce. So we set this up. We have one. We have one um. Like uh, I don't know, it's one one network. So we want to get to the internet, but we won't be able to get to the internet because of the internet's another network, you know. And this is where we introduce the almighty router. So now let's put a network device. Put a network And this is a copper straight through because it's a router. And um, we're just gonna gonna cut this out. So this network is pretty much by itself. And now this is outside the network because it's it's on another subnet. All right, so. Now we have this router, and let's just pretend this is a uh, this is um, this is YouTube right here. So let's go ahead and uh, and this is not how the internet works. This is just like a very broad YouTube, and that's what what should we make this? What should we make this YouTube, Instagram? Is that what it is? Instagram okay all right so that's what we have right here so it's YouTube Instagram 
and this is uh, me on my computer that's connected through a console cable through a copper line uh, going to my router that's the router my AT&T router whatever you want to call it and that's gonna go outside so let's go ahead and um, let's do a copper straight through and go into the fast using two one okay as you can see these are red so let's go ahead and put no and let's give this uh let's go back to the switch oh, we're not we're directly connected to the switch so let's go uh configure terminal and do the question mark and we want to do an interface and what do you want to do let's let's do a vlan let's make vlan 10. let's give it an ip address and let's give it a 10.10.10.5 oh and we need Settlement 255, 255, 255, that's zero. So let's go over this command. I did interface, and that means that I'm going into an interface, and that interface is a VLAN. And what is a VLAN? Funny that you're going to ask because I'm going to make a video uh, about VLANs, and it's going to have so much information, so I hope you watch it. Um, so definitely um, ask about the video, and we will present it. Uh, so it's VLAN 10, so that's the number of the VLAN. And now we we're in interface mode. So once we're in interface mode, we can configure that interface. So um, so it sends an ARB description, so we can send a description. Exit uh, IP, we can give it an IP, so, or we could shut it down. Um, but we're not going to do it. So if you put no shut, so it's not active right now, just FYI. So let's go to IP address, and this is going to be the IP address that we give it, so we could actually talk back. So let's go ahead and, and do that. And I'm just going to exit. And we're going to try to ping 10.10.10. What was it? 85. And if you pay attention, it's not going to respond and I will show you why remember that nifty command show interfaces okay so show interfaces VLAN and the VLAN number VLAN 10 and output modifiers we don't have any output modifiers VLAN 10 is down line protocol is down Okay, so that show interface command, super useful. Make sure that you take advantage of it because it's going to help you. In a production environment, it's definitely going to help you. In your Cisco certification exams, it's definitely going to help you. So um, let's go back to the configuration and interface uh, yeah, VLAN 10. And let's do the no shut. Or is no shutdown as the proper name? Let's do an exit. Another exit. Okay. And now we're going to go to show interface VLAN 10. And VLAN 10 is down. What? Why is it down? Let's go ping 10.10.10.85. Yep. There we go. And if you want to get out of a command, just control shift six or control alt six. Um, it's going to help you whenever you do this type of typo wrong uh, and it's going to try to find the domain server because that's not a command and it's going to think there's a host called command so we're just going to go ahead and exit out uh, definitely want to know that control control shift six is on what is on uh, 
packet tracer and control alt six is what's going to be in the real world just quick fyi and um we're kind of running low on time so i might not be have the time to show you so let's go control t show uh, let's go into vlan 10 no shot let's go um description uh, it's Okay, let's go from right here. Let's exit out of here. Let's try to ping our. Okay, so as you can see, we lost the connection to the other side. So, up. Oh, all right. So now we're able to ping the VLAN. So that's cool. All right. So the VLAN's up. All right. So that means that we can actually connect into the VLAN if we need to. Um, so up. Oh, uh, yeah, you're not going to be able to ping from back here. Um, I remember why. Um, it's because the switches aren't really smart enough to ping back all right so let me see if I'm 10.10.10.85 yep the switch is not going to be able to ping back it doesn't have an interface to ping back from to receive that ping back so boohoo sucks yeah all right yeah Let's see, it, it sh I remember it does work on a production environment. I think maybe it's just because it's a packet tracer. But how many, oh, we're 41. So I'm gonna wrap this up real quick. Um, I kinda wanted to keep it at 30, 30 uh, minutes to an hour. So um, I don't wanna get into this without actually showing. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, IP configuration. Let's change this to dot 20. Oops, dot 20, 15, and this one, we're gonna, it can't be on the same network, otherwise it's gonna be horrible. So it's gonna be dot 20, and I forgot to change the gateway to dot 20. All right. Just gateway, I have to change it to dot 20. Okay, all right. So let's start with going into the router. And um, let's go config T and and T and a uh, cool little thing, put host name and you can change the name to um what's a good name? What should we call this router? Let's call it Lil Wayne. And uh, I, I'm revealing way too much about myself now. <laughs> so, um, so as you can see, um, show IP inter show IP interface. Oh, do show IP int. <coughs> so that's the shorthand for show IP interface. Um, so zero is administratively down, and zero one is administratively down. So administratively down, that means that they're shut down. So what I can do is run the command config. Uh, let's do uh, g0 slash 0. That's going to be the this one right here. Oh. That's on hex value. Uh, that's not a command you want to do. That's uh, for for registry. And now that we're in the interface, um, we're going to do IP interface. Um, Oh, that's IP add, um, IP, IP address. I'm sorry, you, I need to make sure that I teach you guys how to do the full commands. Um, so it's 10.10.10, .10 .10, and that was 254 for this one, 255, 255, 255.0. And um, this is the IP, and this is the subnet. So whenever you have 255, that means that this has to match. Whenever you have zero, it gives you up to 255, uh, 254. 255 is a broadcast, and I'm going to go into detail about the basics on that. I just wanted to show you how all this works. So um, put this, and then uh, no shut, and you can see line protocol uh, is up, and it's changed to up, so now it's solid, and we have uh, 
STP doing its thing right here. So oh, let's go back to this. So now we're gonna exit out of low low Wayne's uh, gig zero zero interface, and now we're gonna do um, we're gonna do um, interface uh, gigabit Ethernet zero slash zero one. And we're going to do a no shut so it comes up. Line state up. All right. So now we're going to give it a logical address. So it's going to be 10.10 .10 and .20 was this one, .254. Oop. Com complete because we need the subnet. Don't forget the subnet. And sorry, subnet mask. So we have the subnet mask right here, and uh, let's see, have the subnet mask here, and up oh, there we go. We have full connection. So um, let's see if we can. Ooh, we're running out of time. So let's see if we can uh, ping, don't we? So we can ping the VLAN. We can ping our gateway which is this up from here to here. And let's see if we can ping the other side of the gateway, which is this right here. And let's set 20.254. And we can ping this side. All right, now let's be, so now we know that these connect connections are made. Now let's try this one right here, which is uh, 15, so. And we can ping across, awesome, awesome, awesome. So I've made two networks and I connected them together. Um, and they have different subnets. This is as easy as it gets. Um, glad that you guys tagged along, followed along. I'm going to show you more complex stuff soon, so be patient. It's coming. Um, that's all that I have for you guys. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube, and it's just search Villa IT. Go to VillaIT.net to get more information. Send us an email if you'd like. It's hello at VillaIT.net if you have any questions or would like to see more material or hit us up on Facebook and we'll definitely make sure that we have that material for you. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and if you have any questions on any uh, subjects regarding getting your CCNA, please let me know and we're about to cut it right on the 50 mark. Thank you so much you guys. You guys have a good night. Enjoy your weekend and don't forget that we're dropping that video, um, that VLAN video as soon as we can. It's actually going to be uh, part of the ICND2. Um, so I'm going to start with the ICND2, uh, ICND2 first, which is the second part of the CCNA exam, just because that's more fresh in my head. Um, thank you so much again for watching. Have a good weekend.